Thanks for joining me in this episode. I'm going to be talking about 10 things I learned in my first year as a managing director of a company. This is season 12, episode 19 of my Zulf Talks podcast, Working for Yourself. You can check out previous episodes to get like an overview, but the main topic today I'm going to be sharing to you is going to be around my journey. I think you're going to find this useful if you're in this boat. I'm going to speak about why I stopped being self-employed and being like a small uh, sole trader to becoming a managing director of a company, how that worked for me, the pros, the cons, I'm basically going to reduce all my learnings from like six months, which I slowly built up knowledge on YouTube, blogs, websites, all into this podcast episode. If you're watching today, well done, you made it to my session on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, I will be explaining every step of this process to help you and bring a bit of value to you to save you time. I'm hoping this episode will be about an hour. There'll be loads of nuggets of information, so definitely stay tuned. Working for yourself, I know you love it. Working for yourself, cause I love it too. Working for yourself, Zolf talks about it, making it easy for you. Working for yourself, go be your own boss. Working for yourself, so we'll help you along. Working for yourself, powered by trusted creators. Zolftalks.com Thanks for joining me. I'm your host, Zolf, and I wanted to share where I am on my working for myself journey and where I am in the process in this moment in time. I find this helps me to focus and reconfirm what I should be doing. If you're a few steps behind or ahead of me, you'll find this useful in planning your success. Currently, I've been working on setting up my company and looking at all the benefits of having this company. And where am I on my working for myself journey? I've filled out my first year of tax returns. So we've done the company's tax returns. I've done my personal tax returns. This gets a little bit confusing, which I'll cover in today's episode as well. When you're a sole trader, you do one tax return as it for like your company's profits. But when you become a company, you have your own tax returns and you have the business tax returns. So this gets very confusing. It took me like eight to nine months to basically get my head around this. Speaking to accountants, checking online. People explain it, but they explain it in the accountancy speak, which is like gobbledygook. They use fancy words to try and sound very like, I think that's the, just the arena. They have to sound that way. But I'm going to explain it how I understood it. So if you're on this boat, you should be in a good place. Um, right now, I've been testing out a lot of ads just to give you an update on my process on my journey. So I've been doing a lot of Google ads, YouTube ads, TikTok ads, Reddit ads, and LinkedIn ads. I've spent in the region of $1,000 on all of those adverts. I'm doing some testing to find out, does it work? Is it good? Should you use it? Shouldn't you use it? And the biggest challenge at the moment I'm facing in the company is basically finding a good place to reinvest your basic earnings. I wanted to share one of the podcasts that I've been recently listening to. I've listened to a few episodes and they were quite interesting. The Side Hustle Show by Nick Looper. It's a great little uh, nugget because I was looking through a few of the episodes and it covers things along the lines of having something alongside your current day job where you can slowly earn a bit of money. So, you know, with our podcast working for yourself, we want to always look at ideas that we can make our hobby into a career or something that makes us a little bit of money to make us financially free, hopefully, and enjoy what we're doing. And he covers ideas around online marketing, offline marketing, ways of blogging, online business, freelancing, marketing, sales funnels, like loads of interesting information. A couple of the episodes I wasn't too keen on, but I will put one of the ones that I liked in the show notes. So make sure you check out the show notes of this episode and link it to an episode. See if it's for you. It's a slightly different position to what I do. I talk real life like you get it as I say it and I enjoy that because I can have a conversation with you. So that's giving you a, a podcast that I've been listening to recently. Back to today's episode. So we are talking about 10 things I learned in my first year as a managing director. And I've got a list of items here. Again, if you sign up to the show resources, go to zulftalks.com. I've made a little easy to digest sheet version of this where you can get it directly to your inbox. 
you basically go get resources show resources and that lets you have a a pdf in your email so i know when you're listening to this podcast you're probably out and about so it can be difficult to retain information so i find giving you like a free version of this helps you so overall i'm going to give you a couple of things um, it's easy to set up a limited company when i say easy it's not difficult but what happens is the ongoing costs are higher than you would expect so the main struggle you're going to have is keeping your business going if that makes sense i wouldn't say really struggle but it is something that you can basically keep going but it will cost you money so it's always interesting that it can cost you money just to be able to offer your service so where is this money why is this something that you should consider so the first point setting up the company how easy is it mm. so you can go online direct gov website and you can create yourself as a limited company would i suggest doing that when i set up my sole trader i did do this what i did was i went online directgov.uk set up all my online accounts and started using the online portal and with your sole trader when i say sole trader i did an episode earlier about explaining what a sole trader is and how to set up working for yourself so you'll find that interesting let me find out what episode that was so you can go back and listen to that one so yeah i've located that um episode it was how to start working for yourself it was season 12 episode 11 so you can listen to that one and if you're not currently working for yourself as a self-employed person that one is basically explaining my process uh, i covered things like how to work for yourself running a business national insurance contributions help and support on your business selling goods and services registering as self-employed and business records if you're self-employed how long to keep your records for and if your records are lost or stolen or destroyed so that was a, a walk through of the official website i did that because i wanted you to have an understanding of sole trader when do you set up as a sole trader and in that one i also spoke about if you earn over a certain amount of money maybe you should think about a limited company and this is basically the my overview of the later episode so again today's one is covering your your back basically to say this is what i did how can it apply to you and should you do it so the first one the point that we looked at is it's easy to set it up yeah it is easy but for a limited company in most cases you will have to have an accountant fill out your paperwork for the government i say government but inland revenue hmrc and that is because they use a specific portal for companies that need to submit your paperwork to hmrc so hmrc is basically her majesty's custom revenue and customs i think that's what it stands for correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's right so because of that you will have to have an accountant so this is where i made an episode is again we talked about should you have an accountant if you're self employed you don't necessarily need one if you're a limited company you will have to have one there's very rare cases where you don't and if you're making profit you're making money you're going to have to have an accountant so there's another bit of cost there and before this point you can actually do a lot of uh, research online where you'll see how people have set up companies but they never really speak about this part of the process lot like of challenges you faced and the benefits and the pros and cons so that's why i'm hoping this episode breaks it down so in the first point you can easily set up a company be prepared for ongoing cost so you can have to keep paying for that company to go ahead which i'll break down through this episode today like what the costs are how do i get to this 20ish thousand pounds that is costing me to run this company you will learn more from youtube than you will from any financial advisors this is my point number 2 this i'll take this with a pinch of salt because i found i was able to spend maybe 2 or 3 days like a couple of hours each day watching various youtube videos of people who actually did the process so they had a company they went through and set up a limited company but they all speak in this i want i'm hoping i don't speak in that same way because i didn't like the way they spoke about it, it was all like oh yeah you're going to set up a limited company you're going to have shareholders you're going to put blah, 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 like really complicated speak for me i want you to explain it to me in simple straightforward english and i didn't really find that i had to watch multiple videos and i got little bits from each of those videos so today i'll try and keep it to the minimum jargon as possible where 
I speak about like a, a, a certain word. I'll try and explain what that word means because I think it's important to understand these words. Now, yeah. So going to YouTube, I searched. I'm in the resources. I'll put three YouTube links that I found very useful. Let me put that in my notes so I can remember to put that down for you. So three YouTube videos links for working for yourself working for yourself as i go along i try and make notes so that way when you're listening to this you will have all this information in one concise location so remember zolftalks.com sign up for the get resources and all this stuff all this research i've done like hours and days worth of stuff for individual of these uh, topics i'm covering you can get like a head start if you're in the same mindset as i am and this makes sense to you if you like the way i present this stuff it'll make sense to you if you prefer it to be a higher level because some people don't like to get involved in the nitty-gritty they're like oh yeah the accountant should do that but i like to at least understand the process because it's important even though you have an accountant in the end you are responsible for the figures and the data that gets reported to hmrc even if you have an accountant because the accountant does their bit but when they do their paperwork they send it to you and say there's basically a disclaimer that we've done our bit but it's based on what you're telling us so if it's wrong it's basically your fault unless they made like a really silly mistake or something that you didn't notice but you have to sign up sign off on the last paper so understanding a lot about the process will help you considerably when it comes to a point that if you ever need to if they question you like oh in 2021 you spent 500 pounds on this uh, company expense uh, camera for your company where's the receipt for it why did you buy it why could you that you know silly questions like that you can remember okay yeah, i remember that i've got the receipt i've got a copy of it in my spreadsheet and i've got it in my quickbooks if you're using a software which i'll come on to so you can answer that question for yourself and you're 100 percent sure that that camera is 100 percent used by the company and it's a company expense you're not using it for personal use like these little silly things like this you want to make sure company things you buy to use in the company are kept only for the company and not for personal use and just that's like an example of what i mean by that so good accountants cost more than you think mm, this is i could go more into my last point about you know financial advisors and all that but financial advisors and accountants there's difference in the two when i thought i'm gonna get an accountant i thought okay the accountant will help me do everything but that's not the case you'll quickly find even the good accountants i think i'm paying for a good accountant based on the quotes i got if you listen to my episode about finding the right accountant you'll notice you can get accountants that do like one yearly fee they probably charge you example 200 pounds uk three ish hundred pound dollars in america they might charge you that amount to say we'll do all your company information once a year that's all you need to do so that's one way of doing it there's another way of doing it where accountants will charge you like a monthly reoccurring fee where if you have any questions you can ask them questions they don't charge you as well as they do like every quarterly you can have special reviews with them they'll charge you more money for that that's not in in that built-in pricing and they're eager to try and get you on higher packages so you can like do a three quarterly review and how are you doing this year if you've got any type of financial background or any spreadsheets and you're doing you're on top of your finances basically right now in time you should be able to say if you're in a company situation you're setting up your sole trader you should be able to say if i asked you now what's your profit you should be able to say okay so far i know i've got x amount expenses for this year which have to go out this is my predicted income and based on that i think this is how much money i'll make today or this year i can i can give you that figure for myself as well as how much am i spending each month on my company to keep it running i can give you that figure straight away also how much is it costing me for employees how much staff wages do i have to always pay and how many contracts that i have to pay for 12 months for example are there any suppliers that need a regular payment for stock all of these figures are in my mind now because I've made my process in a way that I'm using spreadsheets to monitor. Okay, I've got this new expense for this new company I'm buying services from. How long is this for? How much is it going to cost me for the year? So I normally do a year amount because I stay in with the company for a year and either pay off one yearly amount or pay them in a monthly increment. If you're working on a monthly amount, you should be able to say each month I'm paying X amount for expenses. So having an accountant will help you 
finding good accountants is very hard. They cost more money than you think they cost. You could easily spend £10,000 on an accountant for a year. And they'll give you basic things like they'll do your company accounts, they'll do your personal accounts, they'll do your payroll, they'll do additional tasks on there for like bookkeeping, etc. I'll talk more about this as we go along. Actually, in my old episode, when I said about accountants, I covered a lot of these points. So I'll give you an overview, but I suggest listening to that episode because that will give you a nice overview of what accountants actually do. And yes, so they cost more than you think budget for that so already you'll notice now my twenty thousand pounds i'm talking about every year a bunch a a, a section of that money is already for an accountant just to keep the company going so now it makes sense doesn't it and also it does depend how much money you're making how many employees you've got all of these factors are considered well you need to consider which is what we talk about in my working for myself episode like for example if you're earning only fifteen thousand pounds If you're selling £15,000 of services in a year, it might make more sense to you just to be self-employed. You can keep that nice and easy in a a spreadsheet. But as soon as you start getting £40,000, £50,000, £150,000, £200,000, if you're making that kind of money, you're going to have to have a limit. It's more advisable that you have a limited company. It'll be more tax efficient. It'll be nicer to manage and easier for you to be able to manage it. I'm hoping this makes sense. I'm giving this information in the bullet points that I've got and kind of sharing just the ideas that I want to free flowing around these. So the topics in the episode will be in the show notes. I'm just breaking down into these. Again, it's always good to hear from you. So let me know if these make sense. I'm on all the social medias at Zulf Talks and where possible, it's nice to get your feedback. I won't really be able to give you financial advice. I'm not like a trained professional financial advisor or anything like that. I like to share my journey and say this is what I used I looked at this I found it interesting you should maybe think about this so you know hopefully that makes sense you will become a tax expert in the first year the amount of stuff you will learn is going to be intense when I say tax expert what I mean is you'll quickly find out that okay wait a minute so I'm buying this item is it a business item yeah okay so I need to buy it in my business account I need to keep my receipt I need to take a photo of that receipt upload it into the software in the software I need to say this item was bought on this card. I spent X amount on it, put a description in there so in the future I know what it was I brought. Because if you spent $39.99 on some item on the receipt, without having to open the photo in the description, you can put this was a special tripod that I needed for making my live stream for my video, which then is part of my company. Does that make sense? So becoming a tax expert in that expert is okay. So I bought the item. Now that goes into my company account. So if you haven't already listened back to my episodes, I talked about making sure if you've got a limited company, you have a business bank account. Business bank account means it's in the business's name. All the expenses, when I say expenses, like things you spend money on go in that account. Any money you make goes into that account. So you've got one location, keeps it nice and easy. And you will become a tax expert in the first year because you'll start seeing things like, okay, I'm paying myself a salary from my company do I need to pay the maximum salary? For example, I want £40,000 a year. Let's use that as an example. But you don't want to pay yourself £40,000 as just a payment to yourself from the company. You want to do that in a more interesting way. There's loads of videos online, again, explaining the breakdown. I've got a spreadsheet. I might make a special episode directed at this because it's quite a complex topic. It took me a while to get my head around. And it's the idea of you pay yourself a certain amount of money as a salary and then because a company if it's profitable you can have the company say okay you've got shares in my company what that means is you own x amount of the company for example if i've got this pen i could own the pen i could own the cap if i give the cap to somebody else it still belongs to this pen. not a good analogy but giving you an example i've got a pen here i've taken the lid off if i give that lid to someone every time this pen makes a hundred thousand pounds you get 10% of it, like example. So they'll get £10,000 and that's a share. So in the shares, there is a more of a detailed way of doing this. I'm explaining this how I understand it. So hopefully this makes sense. As well as if you have shares in a company, it's treated differently to how you pay yourself a dividend. So a dividend is basically a fancy word for saying taking money from the company in a different way. So you can take a wage, you can take a dividend. 
I thought, okay, I can just take £20,000. However, in the accountancy speak, you would prefer saying that like, okay, I'm taking £10,000 as a wage, which would be paid to me, which is national insurance and um, tax. Like, You have a certain amount of amount of money you can take out. So every year, I think it's about £15,000 you can earn without having to pay any tax. Um, so if you can take that money up into that limit as a salary, then dividends has a lower rate of tax on it. You can take some money as a dividend. So like all of these, getting it, it's difficult to explain, but it's it's not difficult. It's just, it was difficult for me to understand. So I want to share that with you that it took me a while to understand that. But once you get your head around it, I'm quite slow in that example. So what I mean is I'll once I've got it in my head, I understand it, I'll understand it inside and out. But it takes me a while to get to the point where, okay, wait a minute, that's a bit unusual. So why can't I just pay it all as a wage? Okay, so I'll pay a higher tax. So if I pay it in this different way, I'm going to pay no national insurance. I'm going to pay no tax on my salary, but then the dividends I'll pay 7.5% on. Okay, that makes sense. So if I'm paying 7.5% on that, it's more of a company benefit you're getting and not a wage. But it's like there's a nice spreadsheet that um, is made who made it humble penny he does a nice spreadsheet that he's made i might share a link to that that'd be one of the videos that you can look at and he explains it like i might do one of those actually let me know if you want to hear one of those because i've got a spreadsheet and if i show you actual monetary examples it'll make a lot more sense than me trying to speak to you about it but for that you will need to either come onto my youtube channel or listen to this with the spreadsheet open so we can work through it together so i'll, I'll give you resources make sure you check out the resources for that the money you make is not actually all yours. And that's point number five. Let me talk to you more about this. What do I mean by that? So the money that you actually make is not all your money. If you've got money in the company account, that belongs to the company until it's paid out to you as either salary or dividends. So for example, say we've got £10,000 in my company account. I'm the director of that company, I'm responsible for the company, but technically that money is not actually mine. Treat the limited company as a separate thing. Think about it like you're working for a company. That's probably the best way to explain it. So if you're thinking about yourself as a person that works for the company, you're an employee for your company because you're a director, that's actually a role for your company. So that way you know, okay, the money in your bank account, the salary you've been paid is yours. The company has profits sitting there until that's been paid to you. It's not yours. That makes sense. So the £10,000 sitting in the company, you've got your own bank account. At the end of the year, you decide, okay, I want £10,000. The company pays that £10,000 to you as a dividend. And then that money has become yours. But when it becomes yours, because you've taken £10,000 as a dividend on your own tax return, you're going to say this year I made £10,000 as a dividend. And that will be your money. The tax around that is looked at in a couple of ways. So when your company pays a dividend to somebody, the company has to pay a tax. Yes. So the company pays a tax. And then if you receive the money and it's over your threshold, for example, you've already earned £15,000 that year and you got an extra £10,000, you have to pay £10,000 tax on that. So in a way, it sounds like you're paying two taxes. But paying those two taxes would be cheaper than the company paying you that money as a wage. Because when you get a wage, there's a different rate of tax. When you get a dividend, there's a different rate of tax. So it's balancing up. Wait a minute. What makes more sense? Should I have two apples at the same time? Or should I have an apple now and then have another apple later on, which then I can eat fully and not give people sections from? Does that make sense? What kind of, me and my analogies apples that's a great one isn't it yes so you need to find ways to keep your profits working for you this is an interesting one so if you're doing well and you've got money in your bank like in this example if you've got ten thousand pounds sitting in your company and i'm saying until you've taken it, it's not yours while it's sitting in the company account what is it doing it's not really doing anything for you is it because say for example like a big company like got a million pounds in their company account you don't just want the money sitting there because firstly, there's a certain amount of tax you have to pay on all your profits. So you're paying more money. Is there a way you can reinvest that money into something else that can make your company better? So rather than have a million pounds sitting there as a money pot in my company, 
personally, I would look at starting up new ventures, which can maybe reuse that money to make more money. Make sense? So that's a slightly more interesting way of looking at the money situation. So hopefully that ties in because the money is not technically yours until you pay for it and the tax has been paid, etc. But while it's sitting there, can it work harder for you? And when it's being used within the company, then you've not got as much profit sitting there not earning you money. So it's a bit of a tricky way of getting around this, but hopefully I'm, I'm making sense. I, I am in my mind, but it can be interesting if, if it helps you. Let me know in the comments if you're following along. We're at point number six here. And number seven, you start looking at investments and ways to keep your profits working for you. So as a director, you'll start thinking, all right, you know what? I'm getting this money. It's not mine, or if it is mine, when I've got the dividend paid to me and I've got a certain amount of money that I need to live off, say, for example, I've got, I can live comfortably off £15,000 in one year. Everything is a minimum. You have your own house. You don't really pay for any uh, expenditures like cars or loans or credit cards if you're in a financially secure place. If not, look back at my episode where I talked about re-budgeting your finances and making like pots. So if you have a credit card bill, a loan, a car finance, you know how much you need to pay for that and you have to allocate money towards that. So once you've allocated money towards that, then you start using money for yourself and your you know, progression and living and food and clothes and all the usual stuff. So you'll start looking for investments to keep your profits working for you. This means when I've got money sitting in my company account, fair, fine, make that work hard for me. But what about when that money is paid to me? What do I do with the money when it's in my account? Am I putting in savings accounts? Savings interest rates are really ridiculous. Should I buy something that I want to buy? Should I buy a flat? Should I buy a car? What types of investments are good? What type of investments are not good? So if I buy a brand new car, it reduces value. So I've lost money, technically speaking. So it's all a personal journey. What do you like most? I like watches, I like gear, like cameras, I like all these equipment things, but majority of the time it's all business related because the cameras and everything else I use, I use it for my business, solely for my business. So I'm reinvesting the company money into those bits because that is only used for the business. Apart from that, it's it's all dependent on your life, how you invest it. You can look at savings options. You need to get advice around what is a good savings plan for you so maybe a financial advisor may be good I, i'm going to do an episode about how i found a, a financial advisor and all the benefits that they can bring to you because right now i have some money in uh, cash isa which is like a what do you call it in america you call it a it's like a a, a name for it yes yeah, so i just quickly searched that up you call it an ira in america so that's uh, like a savings place which is like tax free you can only put a certain amount of money of that each year in addition to that you can look at stocks and shares cash ices i use vanguard for putting money into savings i did an episode quite a while ago where i started putting money into that so i might do a follow-up on that so it's as a director you start looking at more interesting ways of making your money work for you because if you're familiar with inflation rates and how things are going when you're older or when you want to retire things like pensions the money you get back you won't be able to buy the same thing that you can now so for example remember we used to buy lollipops i used to be able to buy a lollipop for like five pence when i was a kid uh, other day i went to a shop guess how much lollipop is 50p for like the same lollipop so that shows you over like a 10 year period what we were able to get for 5p before is costing us 50p in this example Chris packets used to be 10p now they're 30p 50p for like a Transformers crisp packet, 39 pence in some cases. So all of these things, if you think around the long-term goal, at some point, what you think is good now, so say for example, a hundred thousand pounds now, won't get you, you won't be able to buy as much with it when you're 10 years down the line, because that money is not going to be the same value, if that makes sense. But that's the inflation, I might do a separate episode again. I keep saying this, but I try and touch it until I know what you're more interested in, then I can make more episodes around that. Yes, so you will discover a lot of people talk the talk but can't walk the walk. Okay, this is point number eight. The reason I say this is on YouTube, I found a lot of people telling you to do stuff and explaining that this works, that works. But looking at what they do, they've never done that. So that's why I prefer listening to people that have maybe gone through the journey. Because as you go through the journey, you learn a lot more than telling people that's how to do it. So for example, in my scenario, 
everything I talk about is things I've personally gone through the journey of. So, for example, I personally had to find an accountant. I had to look at financial advisors. I had to set up a company. I had to look at savings accounts. I had to look at investments. I went through the journey. So I understand when I go through that journey, I do a lot of research around each area. So then I can share that, okay, this is what I found useful. This is what I found wasn't useful. I don't really like to talk about or share things I haven't personally had experience with because then I feel like I'm not bringing you any value. So, yeah, that's just like a little, not a rant, but just be careful who you listen to and not everybody is going to be right. Even in my example, what I'm telling you may not apply to your scenario. You might be in a different headspace, a different financial space than what I am. So not everything will apply. You may be more save. You may not be able to save money at this moment in time. You may have a lot of uh, things that you've purchased or you're in a place where you need to pay things back. But the goal here is to get you in a place where we can start maybe lowering some of the debt or any credit cards or any money you've got, trying to be a bit more manageable with that type of situation so we can get you on the goal for longer term, like security net, having a bit of money for you to enjoy your life, basically. You will discover, yep, so number nine is finding stuff with the basic values of employment doesn't exist. Yes, yeah, so when you're going through your journey and as you start growing, you're going to find it's very difficult to find good stuff I I struggle with this because when I worked in the financial industry like ages ago, I always worked to the best of my ability and I did more than I needed to do just because personally I like to like do really well, like work. If I need to like, I don't know, write something down, I'm going to make sure it's the best I can do. But I quickly learned a lot of people are out there just, you know, dodging and diving and not really telling you they can do something but not being able, not actually being able to do it. So basically lying. So it's quite difficult to find good stuff. It's just been my personal experience. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that are really good. It's just going through this scenario and finding stuff. It was very difficult. Even now, there's a lot of jobs out there. If you have the, if you want to find a job, you will find a job. And it's always depends. This is a whole new conversation. But you, I started doing paper rounds and slowly moved along to doing loads of different jobs before I was able to get a job, which is more like, what's the, what's the word? Yeah, I naturally fell into my role, but it was more, it took a lot of hard work and it's not, it doesn't sound like the people are working hard at the moment that want a role. So I had a couple of vacancies that I looked around and they just, it's like nobody really has that drive if I'm there. That's, I don't know if that's another rant. Uh, okay. So finding stuff is very difficult. The values don't exist. So I have a value in the company of we need to do everything X, Y, Z. And that needs to filter down to everybody else in the company to make sure we're all in the same page. Luckily, the team I've got is very good now because we can all have the same mindset. We're doing really good. But it's picking and finding the right people to add into the team takes longer. And finding the right people is just more difficult. And make sure you have insurance. So, yes, that's a good one. Talking about the topics I talk about, I basically give it like my point of view, a diary. There's different types of insurances out there. As a company, you need to have certain types of insurances that you pay for to cover your company for like day-to-day -day expenses, uh, like liability insurance, all these little things. If you've got physical premises, all those kind of insurances, home insurance, contents insurance, and then as well as influencer insurance, which is specific to certain types of fields. If you're making videos talking about products, you need to have a cover for basically covering yourself if you're giving information uh, luckily i don't give any financial information but i still have insurance in place in case someone ever decides to go through and say oh you talked about this and the way i talk about things i make sure of everything set out in disclaimers so yeah that's something to think about i did quite a lot of investigation there but i just got the best insurance i could get for the company to cover the company basically uh, you will spend a lot of time planning the direction of your company and doing a lot without doing much at all this is an amazing one. So I kept this as number 11 because as a director, you'll have your fingers in most things going on in the company, but not the day to day runnings, if that makes sense. If you've planned it, if you're on your own, you probably will be doing a lot more. But the aim here is you're overseeing everything that's going on. You plan things and you think, OK, I want to do this because I know in a year's worth of time that will be like a big part of the company. So foreseeing for planning thinking of ideas that will work well to make the company more strong, keeping to the key values and not always strong in the monetary value. It might cost you money, but it makes your brand better. So I think of it like educating 
trust and serve so like trust educate serve if you can create trust with who you're speaking to your customers uh, where possible educate so like show that okay actually doing it this way is better than doing it this way because in this example this is what we found and then that works out a lot more better for you and then serving so like if they want something obviously giving them something so serving is last like selling is last on my list most of the time i'm just educating and talking and creating trust around this is what i do this is what i can bring to the value and it kind of just works out so when you don't try and sell if you're good at what you do it just sells that's how i find in the last 15 years that's just always worked for me so yeah so you do a lot without doing much at all so for example today I've done a lot of planning. I've done a lot of updates on information around like the business plan, what we're doing in the next three years, how well did that last project do, how well did this project do. So it's always like you're doing a lot, but when you look back at the day, if someone asks you, what did you do today? Actually, you know what? Physically, there wasn't actually anything there apart from, well, I made this episode. I made three videos earlier on in this day. And also one last point, Adam, how about this? We have more free time than you think you have. If I can do everything I've done, I'm completely, currently I'm a company director. I've got 10 YouTube channels that I create regular videos for. I've got two podcasts. I live stream on multiple social media platforms. I live stream every day on TikTok, Amazon Live, LinkedIn. So like, if I can do it, we've got the same 24 hours in the day. So I reckon push yourself. You can do what you want to do. Think about research and take time off being a consumer and be a creator. What I mean by that is a lot of people will consume stuff more than they create stuff. And that means if you're watching Netflix straight after work for three hours, is that the best you can be doing with your time? Take those three hours, use one of those hours to research what you want to do, find out what you want to do, find out what you enjoy doing, making that into a hobby, making that into a career. And then you'd be like me, you won't have to work again. So I'm hoping you find this episode helpful. It would be really good if you can leave a review wherever you're listening to this. The show resources are available at zolftalks.com. You can also sign up to the mailing list there, which will allow you to get information to help you on your journey working for yourself.